Okay, so I've been working on this little contraption here. This is a copy carve, and I've made it completely different than any of the ones I've seen online. This one just uses drawer slides, and on a flat uh, piece of wood here, it's not going to be real thick like some of the other ones are. I see some that, you know, do six or eight inches on the Z axis on here. This one I made exclusively for doing uh, pistol grips, and because I want to get a real good copy of the pistol grips to replace some of the ones on some of the revolvers I got because they're just not right for the guns that I want. They're right for the guns because that's what they were put on when they built it. So anyways, I've made this copy carve here and I'm going to show you a little bit about it. It's like I said, it's just drawer slides, a piece of wood, a couple pieces of wood. This is the piece that moves up and down. Anyways, I'm going to get this piece mounted back on there, get it mounted back on the board, and then we'll see a little bit closer about what it's like. Okay, so now that I've got everything put together, I've got to get this thing uh, mounted back on here, which was a pain. I've really only got one screw on each one of these, but the wood will help keep it where it needs to be. So anyways, I'm going to try to get this thing put back together because, like I said, these rails, uh, you kind of fight them because they want to wiggle all over the place. Okay, it does lock into position because these are like, these are drawer slides. And it's the kind of drawers that when you close, you can push it all the way in. And at least these two bottom rails, the two top ones are different. So I've got my, I've got the axis going this way and I've got the axis going this way. Now I've got my little router I can put in here and then I've got a stylus that's the same size and shape as the, um, the router bit. Anyways, let's get the other stuff in here. Okay, I've been tinkering with this thing all day, and I finally got it all put together and all the good stuff. And I've got my 1851 Pieta Navy grips out here. And the thing, the reason I grabbed those is because for right now, they're the easiest ones for me to get set up because they should be a one-piece grip. Well, they could have been a two-piece grip, but these are a three-piece grip, which is really weird because it's just weird the way they're made. But anyways, you can make the wood grips out of these. And I've got this one screwed down. I've got a sec or a uh, piece of wood in here to bring it up. And then I've got two pieces of wood here because I needed to have the bottom of these the same elevation as there. So I'm going to be cutting quite a bit through this one. But what I'm going to do is just kind of get a close outline of it anyways. I think I've got everything set up. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. I'll get these, this half of it, out of the way. And I've got everything set up. I got a couple of uh, clamps on the back there just as a counterweight. And that's really, the weight is pretty good on it because that's, uh, that's pretty well balanced. A little bit of down pressure on this side. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a try and see what I come up with. Okay, there's a lot of sawdust there, but I'm going to show you a little close-up of this. The thing I should have done was start out with a lot thinner wood. I milled away a bunch of stuff that just didn't need to be milled away. If I had started out with something a little closer to the thickness of the grip, it would have been a lot quicker, not quite as much sawdust. Let me get this cleaned up real quick, and then I'll give you a close-up of this. Okay, so there it is. I Like I said, I start out with three-quarter inch thick wood here. This is probably half inch at the most, so... I had to mill away a lot of it that I didn't need to, but I've carved out a pocket in there and there is the grip down inside there. Now, it looks to me like I could be off just a little bit there. There might be a little flex in this thing. I'm not sure. I'm still going to do some tweaking to it and everything. And like I said, I'll start out with a little thinner wood. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty close to that right there. 
Yeah, I'm going to try it again tomorrow. It's late at night right now, actually. <clears throat> it's actually just about 11 o'clock, so uh, I'm done tinkering with it for tonight. And like I said, I'll probably take it outside and do a little bit with it because it's just way too much uh, sawdust everywhere. Plus, I'll put a thinner wood on here and give it a try and see what a actual set of grips comes out like. Um, that actually is cut down into my sacrificial piece here so um yeah it's it's a grip uh you can change the bits out but you got to change the stylus to match it uh, and these are not new i mean it's not cnc which would be really nice to have but uh, i don't know enough about them to um maybe someday i'll get into it but this is something that has been around for a long time, way back in the day when, you know, they were powered by water wheels or whatever steam or whatever power source they had for some of these tools. They were, they were around then and they had a copy car, the stock duplicators and stuff like that, that they would make. The stocks would actually rotate and they may have seven or eight of them on this machine at the same time. They have one master and they rotate. And the same thing, a router travels back and forth. I just made this one a little bit different. It's a little less bulky, I guess. Um, so I, I wanted it to not really take up a whole lot of space because I don't plan on keeping it on a worktop all the time. I could take it down and move it somewhere and uh, get it out of the way. It's really pretty compact, especially if I take the router out of it. Um, it'll fold up to just about nothing. But anyways, there's my copy carve duplicator, and we'll give this thing a try tomorrow and see how it does. Okay, so now I've got it outside. i got it all plugged in and everything. I had to do some adjustment on this thing because the pins didn't quite line up. And it turns out that my table may be slightly bowed inward some. Uh, moving it around probably doesn't help either because I can see right now they are also just a tiny bit off. Yeah, just a little bit, about a sixteenth to a thirty-second. And it kind of depends on where it's located at, too. So, right now it looks pretty consistent with being off the same amount. So let me adjust this just a hair. And we'll go from there and see how it does. Okay, one of the things you might have noticed I did do also was I could not thin this board down on my table saw and I don't have a planer. So what I did do was I shimmed my um, copy piece up just a little bit so I don't have to mill quite so deep in the three quarter inch piece of wood. Yeah, I will have to cut it out on the bandsaw or the scroll saw. But now that I've got it kind of whittled down some there, I should be able to start getting the shape of that in there. So let's give that a try. Okay, so here's a little closer look at what I did. Um, it's kind of rough, and my pattern shifted on me just a little tiny bit. It uh, twisted some, which throws things off. And one of the things I tried to do is I tried to line this edge up with the edge here so that there would be one less cut I'd have to make sure was accurate. Um, but I think I'm off just a little bit, and I think this is going to be a little shorter here than this one is. But, I mean, it's a learning experience for me. And this is just pine. I didn't make it out of any good wood because um, I just want to practice with it first before I try to do something out of some decent wood. But I'm going to get this thing out of here and get it trimmed up and see if I can't do a little uh, sanding and shaping on it, see if I can't get it to look halfway decent. You can see that where the screw goes on the original there, it's actually, you know, shows up in there. But I don't want that on there because I want these to appear to be one-piece grips. And that's easy to just sand off of there. All right, I got my antique rigid uh, scroll saw out here. Get this thing trimmed up. Got a lot of shaping to do on it. And still the thickness is gonna be way more than what it's supposed to be. But I can always hit that on my disc sander and uh, thin it down a little bit. But I'm gonna hit it with just a sanding block for right now. Okay, so I did a little bit of shaping of the uh, grip out on my um, my uh, disc sander, belt sander combination. And 
Beans that I made the grip so much thicker, it actually almost may be salvageable. I gotta reshape this a little bit to get the angle just right on it, but it's not terrible. Like I said, it could be salvageable. There is a little bit of a gap right there. I probably won't use it, but I'll go ahead and uh, yeah, shape it up a little bit closer anyways. I've got a lot of material I can remove from there, and I don't know that I'll go ahead and do the other side. I could easily. Uh, because, like I said, with these grips, they actually come in three pieces, and it's the three pieces you need. If you're going to make a one-piece grip, you make both sides of it, and then you make the spacer that goes in the middle, and this is already set up. So it's actually a pretty good existing pattern if you've got one of these 1851s that's similar to this. I'll have to wipe it all down and get the dust off and everything. And, like I said, I just made this out of pine. It is the select pine, so it's the good pine anyways. Um... And the shape is not quite exactly right. Uh, my pattern did move on me a little bit on my little homemade copy carve. Uh, but there's a little bit of shaping that can be done. And it may be able to be used. When you buy, you can buy unfinished grips. I bought a pair from Dixie Gunworks for the uh, Man With No Name grip. And they come oversized. So you have to do all the shaping on it anyways. And the little copy carve that I made could actually, if I really took my time and was real careful with it, I could actually make a set of grips that would be comparable to the oversized grips that you would get from like Dixie Gunworks. So I may tinker around with these a little bit and um, see what I can do. But uh, the little copy carve machine I made is not quite right. There are some issues with it. Uh, one is with those drawer slides sawdust gets in there and makes it drag a little bit and you don't want that you want it to move as freely as possible there is a little bit of flex in it which is really bad because you can mill too much away or not enough away if there's that much flex in it so that's uh version 1.0 there will be a version 2.0 that will be made more rigid and probably more like the traditional ones i guess i should have just followed their plans in the beginning because those work pretty good uh there are commercial uh, units available, but they're pretty pricey, so I don't know that I want to spend that much money on it just to make a couple grips like this. This would function just fine if I was only going to do a couple, and those drawer slides I've had for, I don't know, 15, 17 years, somewhere around there. I bought them for another project and didn't use them for that, so I adapted them to something else. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review and taking a look at my copy carve version 1.0. And hopefully sometime in the future, there'll be a, ver be a version 2.0 and it'll be a lot better quality. I'm going to keep shaping.